Donald Trump and his defense file a motion obliterating Judge Murkan and his daughter. We know the daughter, Lauren, was somebody who has been raising a ton of money for Democrats, has a lot of animosity against Donald Trump. And the question is, does Judge Juan Murkan and him protecting her at every single turn implicate him and his judicial bias? Answer, of course, is yes. And Trump is saying the same. He filed this major recusal motion. Previously, we just had the pre-motion, just about a page. This is 37 pages plus 100 plus page supplemental that has exhibits and more, including the judge's daughter's ex account and all her Twitter posts and so on. Now, it's not just us saying that this looks good. It's also a retired federal judge. This woman says, yeah, there is serious problem and bias in this courtroom. And so let's just get right into it. Taking a look at the Trump recusal motion filed in the Supreme Court of the state of New York. This is Alvin Bragg's prosecution against Donald Trump. And this is President Trump's motion to recuse Judge Juan Merkel. And remember, trial is right around the corner. April 15th is when we're scheduled. And Trump is now saying to the judge, you have to go. You are biased. You are not somebody who can have a fair and impartial trial. Here's why. All right, Judge Juan Mercan, President Trump respectfully submits this motion and this affirmation, and we're seeking your recusal. Here's why. Your daughter, Judge Lauren Mercan, has a direct financial interest in these proceedings. Why? Well, she has an ownership stake in authentic campaign. Now, based on public data, Authentic, which services exclusively Democrats, is the number 21 raked vendor in the country for the 2024 election. Isn't that curious? Now, in 2019, Lauren, the judge's daughter, made public statements during a podcast that we played here at a previous video, with your honor, that reflect bias against President Trump from the speakers in that exchange, and we'll get into that more. But consistent with that conversation, President Biden and Vice President Harris are long-term clients of Authentic. Those are Trump's opponents. And Lauren, along with many other politicians and entities that are actively campaigning and advocating against Trump right now. Now, at least six of Authentic's clients used fundraising solicitations that referenced this case around the time of the indictment. So just to be clear, Judge Juan Mercan, we're going to say Judge Mercan is here. He is prosecuting Trump or allowing the prosecution to go on. We've got Authentic Campaigns, which is serving the Democrats. So we have all these entities here. And Authentic is writing about the judges. So Authentic is writing about the judge's case in their support of the Democrats, right? So we have this connection between all three of them. Now, President Trump's arraignment and following the court's denial of Trump's recusal motion. So she just puts it in her newsletter. She's like, oh, perfect. Authentic's clients disperse more than $18 million to the company between the return of the indictment and present. It is industry practice that Authentic would receive percentages based on the funds raised and the recipient engagement. And Ms. Mercan had an own ownership stake and a leadership role in the company, all while this case is pending. In August of 2023, the court ruled that Trump's recusal motion was based on remote and speculative arguments. We dispute that. It's clear that this motion cannot be disposed of so easily. Judge, Trump is now the presumptive nominee, leading contender in 2024. His success in the primaries, which followed the court's ruling, has cemented his status as a political target of Authentic and of Ms. Mercan, Lauren, and their clients. It's now official. He He's going to the presidency. Now, while that appears to be consistent with the policy, the company's political views, the more important consideration for purposes of this motion is that Authentic, the judge's daughter's company, benefits reputationally. And they make more money by targeting Trump. For example, in February and March of this year, Authentic actively marketed its services using its connections to Joe Biden and to Kamala, as well as other graphics and other content that derided President Trump. Now, additional recent developments also support this filing. Your Honor went and you talked to the AP. You participated in a press briefing in an interview at a high level talking about this case and how hard you were preparing for trial based on a separate recent statement by the Office of Court Administration who was playing PR for his daughter. They came out. The judge used the court administration to say Miss Mercan apparently deleted her ex account that contained all the bad posts against Trump last April. That's weird. Now that's the same month that your honor solicited an ethics opinion about recusal. And in that letter, you declined to disclose the recusal letter to the defense or the public. This judge is so corrupt. We've played here how this judge is not opening the caseload, the docket, so that we can see anything. And apparently that's pretty standard in New York. But this, of course, is a case of national importance. Trump is also gagged, so Trump can't talk about this case. So we don't get to see anything except what the judge wants us to see. Now, the suspicious timing of the alleged decision by Ms. Mercan to delete the ex-account means that maybe you told her to do that. So you might, judge, be covering up for your daughter. You sent an ethics opinion 
opinion, a request. Hey, this happens all the time. Attorneys, judges call. Hey, I've got this situation. Can you help me? They look into it. They say, yeah, rule 5.1 says you can't do that. Oh, good to know. Thanks. So he calls. He gets an ethics opinion at the same time she deletes her account. Isn't that nice? Your Honor also recently issued and expanded a gag order that doesn't let us talk about her, even though it is a legitimate public criticism and its evidence is included in some of this motion. The court also permitted Alvin Bragg to refrain from publicly filing important submissions and other evidence and other email communications in violation of Trump's right to a public trial. So Bragg is also filing stuff under seal or under public docket. So we can't see it. Having been repeatedly assigned to cases relating to President Trump and his business, including two rounds of plea negotiations with Weisselberg, the prosecution of Steve Bannon, the court is now making extrajudicial statements about this case. So in other words, Murkan has been on all of these and he's allowing the people to proceed under the cover of darkness when it suits their political agenda. And this threatens President Trump with contempt and worse if he points out the court's daughter's conflict. And so you're covering everything up and then gagging the president and threatening him with jail and prison if he even speaks out about it. This current situation is patently unjust. Todd Blanche writing for Trump's defense says, Judge one, your interest in these proceedings by virtue of the relationship with your daughter and your daughter's ongoing receipt of commercial and reputational benefits of these manners in which you conduct proceedings requires a recusal. There is an actual conflict here. There is an unacceptable appearance of impropriety. This is easily illustrated by the fact that it would be completely unacceptable to most New Yorkers if the judge presiding over these proceedings had an adult child who worked at Win Red or MAGA Inc. What if the judge's daughter worked at MAGA Inc. or Win Red? There would be a national meltdown, okay? They're already melting down over Judge Cannon. Imagine if Trump's judge had a child who supported Trump aggressively on X. They'd be melting. The logic of this conclusion is further demonstrated by the fact that Lauren is not simply a salaried employee at Authentic, okay? She's not answering phones over there, but profiting from the promotion of a political agenda that is hostile to President Trump. She is an executive, has included fundraising solicitations based on this case as well. Accordingly, Trump requests that you recuse yourself, Your Honor. Here's the background on Lauren. Judge's daughter, Lauren, beginning in at least 2018, Miss Mercon worked at Authentic. She was the director of digital advertising. February 2019, she started working as the director of digital persuasion. And guess who that was for? Kamala Harris. In 2019, Authentic made Miss Mercon a VP. They market themselves as a full service digital agency for nonprofits and campaigns that unleashes the power of the internet to create lasting and inclusive change. Oh gosh. In connection with the announcement, Authentic stated Mercon would quote, continue to manage our kick-ass ads team and we would take on a larger role in managing and growing our company in the upcoming years. Now we played this clip last week during a June 2019 podcast, Miss Mercon Lauren attributed the following statement to your honor. My dad said, I hate that politicians use Twitter. It's so unprofessional. That's not how a politician should behave themselves. And that was on June 2019. So around the time Trump was a president. Miss Mercon explained Lauren during the podcast that she responded to the judge saying, yeah, I think there are a lot of instances where it is not used in like, you know, when our president tweets anything that he thinks and like, that's not what he should be using it for. So the judge and the daughter ragging on Trump, showing their bias on podcasts before the case is even brought. Now at the conclusion of Harris's campaign in December, Authentic made Mercon a partner and part owner now. Following Ms. Mercon's promotion in 2020, they named Campaigns and Elections magazine probably, named Ms. Mercon quote, a rising star affiliated with the Democrats. Now the write-up concerning the award credited Ms. Mercon with setting new benchmarks and winning elections and doing great groundbreaking work for clients like Kamala and Shifty Shift Pencil Neck who has been censured. They should have added this. We'll have to tell Todd Blanche. Anytime you're going to quote Adam Schiff, we have to include just an asterisk. Is it censured? Censured for Shifty. Total loser. By August 2023, Miss Mercon had become president of Authentic. Man, she holds it. Shifty got censored. Loser. On January 20th, the X account with username Lauren M426, which appears to have been used by Lauren, posted the following image of Trump leaving the White House on January 20th. This is being submitted by Trump's defense, right? So this is a statement that they are submitting from their investigatory team that they are swearing, standing behind with their law license. So here is their investigation. Lauren Mercon, Judge Mercon's daughter, posted this on January 20th, like a Valley Girl 16 year old. Bye! So she posted this, no one liked it, one person liked it, and on January 20th, Trump departs the White House for 
for the last time as president after they stole the election. So, okay, that's the daughter of the judge. Now, archived internet data from around that time contains other ex posts by Mercon that also reflect hostility towards the president. For example, they say on March 27th, the director of comms for New York's court administration, they issued a public statement that Ms. Mercon Lauren had, quote, abandoned and deleted her ex account approximately a year ago. Around the time of the announcement, the ex account indicated that the user joined in April 2023 and included a picture of President Trump behind bars. Interesting. There's Lauren. There's Trump behind bars. Daddy is running the case. Daddy has the opportunity to literally sentence Trump to jail and prison. These posts are protected, joined April 2023. Trump's behind bars. Now, within days, the account was modified to include a photograph of VP Harris, but it still indicated that the user had joined in April 2023. So she locks down her account, changes the photo. Better get rid of Trump in prison in my ex account. Now, more recently, the photo of Kamala was also removed, and now it indicates that the user joined last month in March 2024. Isn't that interesting? So maybe deleted the whole account and then somebody else snagged that name, right? Maybe deleted it and then she reclaimed it maybe. Who knows what happened? But that feels like it is her doing, changing these photographs to cover up her clear bias. Now, as of April 2nd, 2024, the list of featured clients on Authentic's website included a bunch of stuff. Biden, Harris, Hochul, Shifty Shift Censured, Jeffries, Dan Goldman, Liar, Underwood, Lee, Senate Majority Pack, Democrat Pack, okay? It's like the whole stinking DNC. Look at all these people. Ah, uh, just the worst of the worst. Now, based on this work, Authentic was named to 2023 Political Consultants Power 100, doing great job. New York's most effective campaign advisors by working with Jeffries and Hochul. Now, currently, they are the number 21 ranked vendor on disbursements that it has received getting a lot of money. Now, how does Lauren get connected to Trump's political opponent in 2024, says? Well, in connection with the 2020 election, Harris's presidential campaign paid $4.8 million to Authentic, more than the campaign paid anyone else. Authentic's subsequent work for Biden and Harris used Facebook, and they targeted Facebook ads for Joe for president. Lauren described Authentic's first of its kind to use AI as a case study on their website, right? So here's what she posted. Hey, we did a great job. We reached 200,000 new undecided voters in swing states. We engaged 15,000 undecided voters in Arizona, and we surpassed the margin of victory. So maybe she's responsible for this. Now, more recently, in mid-2024 March, Authentic promoted its connection to Joe Biden on its website. Authentic wrote this, looks like maybe Facebook or LinkedIn says, Kat Stern led our paid media team and our mobilization efforts to win. We miss her here, but we're so happy that the Biden campaign is in good hands. So she left Authentic and is now working for Biden. Okay, so she has worked for Biden and then people are now going to work for Biden. So Congressman Schiff censured, says in 2023 and 2024, Authentic repeatedly promoted its work for Shifty. Here's what they posted December 2023. Authentic has also posted a testimonial from Schiff. He says, they've helped me build a great digital program and they helped me, you know, have a bunch of brain dead Democrats vote for me. He paid them $9 million in disbursement. Congressman Underwood, Congresswoman Underwood, she raised a bunch of money for them, $4.4 million for them. Senate Majority Pack, same thing here. Senate Majority Pack for the Democrats paid $6 million to Authentic, the judge's daughter. House Majority, how much did they get paid? Well, we don't know, but $9 million in completed video views and all of those people who are all clearly anti-Trump people who are funneling money to the daughter of the judge who's going to theoretically imprison Trump, which is just crazy. She's a co-owner of this company now. Here is the fundraising that they've done. This indictment in this case was returned back on March 30th last year. On the same day, clients of Authentic sent emails that specifically reflected this case. Senate majority, a client, says, breaking news, Trump's been indicted by Manhattan. Congressman Schiff, the Manhattan DA's office, has indicted Trump for the first ever indictment of a former American president. The dumbest case ever. The House majority pack for the Democrats. Trump was indicted. And Schiff posted on X, soliciting contributions based on the indictment. And so these are literal case specific solicitations by Authentic and therefore Miss Mercon's clients. They continued. Schiff sent out two more emails talking about the Trump indictment. And maybe you can chip in a few bucks, says Shifty. One said, never before has a president been indicted. Trump will finally have his day in court. They all jumped on this. Congresswoman Underwood, Jeffries jumped on it. They all started using this trope. No one's above the law, except Hunter Biden, Joe Biden, Hillary Clinton, Mike Pence, and the rest of them. On April 21st, Congresswoman Lee sent something out. Here are some of the fundraising solicitations. On April 3rd, the day before Trump's arraignment, Schiff sent a barrage of solicitations on Facebook. Okay, so this is like authentic doing the work, right? A 
Authentic runs the Facebook campaigns. Schiff says they created a great digital powerhouse for me. And look, look at all these posts. Hey team, the Manhattan DA just indicted Trump, which is Lauren's father's case. Manhattan DA just indicted Trump for money he paid to Stormy. Here's another ad. Let's be clear, Trump is dangerous. He just got indicted. All orchestrated by Lauren, whose daddy is handling the case. More fundraising emails. Schiff solicited a new thing via Facebook. Here's Schiff posting about this. If you're wondering what's going to happen with Trump's indictment, listen to me now. What's going on with the indictment? Part two. More Facebook ads. Uh, Trump's raising money. Let's fight back. He's been indicted. He's been indicted. He's been indicted. Who's writing these ads? Not Adam Schiff. It's Lauren's company. They're running all of these. Here's some more from Schiff. I warned everyone that Trump would weaponize his indictment for political gain. But no, now Lauren's, you know, her team is typing this crap up. So here is a post recusal motion fundraising solicitation. So they're saying we already recused you and you're still getting money. On May 31st, 2023, last year, Trump filed a motion to recuse the judge based on Ms. Mercon's role at Authentic. Now we learned about it from the media, not from you. Of course, you denied that motion later. Now, following that ruling, Schiff made a post on TikTok talking about the case. Still, your honor's daughter's client, Senate Majority Pack, also kept making funding requests as well. And the court made public statements about this case. On March 17th, the AP published an article saying the judge had participated in an interview with the media last week. Judge said, I am not going to talk about the case, but then repeatedly did so. He reportedly stating that, you know, talking about this case, getting ready for the historic trial is intense. The court is striving to make sure I've done everything I could to be prepared and to make sure that we dispense justice. There's no agenda here. We want to follow the law. We want justice to be done. And then they use the court administration office as a PR arm to go and clean up the Laura Mercon mess. So here's the law. They say, look, your honor, we have a right to due process under the law. Okay. It means impartial. It means a judge shall not be biased. And here is the law that we're going to hear referenced repeatedly. Section 14 of the judiciary law in New York says a judge shall not sit as such in or take any part in the decision of an action in which he is interested. Now to be disqualified, a judge must have an interest in the subject matter of the suit. And the interest does not need to be large, but it does need to be real. Now we have a lot of rules that govern judicial conduct, fairness, honesty, soundness of character. And a judge must not allow family or other relationships to prejudice them. And a judge shall disqualify himself when the impartiality might be questioned, in particular when it comes to family. Now, in light of these recent developments, this motion is timely. Authentic and your daughter have drawn close connections to Biden, Harris, Shifty, and developed a whole business around this. And she's now a part owner and a president, partner. She's going to gain even more benefits as this trial continues to go on. Financial benefits and reputational benefits, because your daddy is the one who's handling the case. This is demonstrated. Authentic is trying to market itself using social media posts about Trump. It's improper for the court to preside over these proceedings while your daughter benefits both financially and reputationally from the manner in which this case is interfering with Trump's campaign. Under these circumstances, recusal is required, and we have to maintain the integrity of these proceedings as well as the public's trust in them. That's already gone. Now, several developments since you denied our first motion must be revisited. Trump's now the nominee, and there was a lot of shenanigans happening with that X account. Now, to the extent to which these proceedings are interfering with the 2024 election is no longer, as the court previously put it, speculative. Okay, it's actual interference now. Since this court's recusal ruling that you denied earlier, Trump has become the presumptive Republican nominee and the leading candidate in 2024. And what this court is doing is going to impede, literally, Trump's efforts to campaign against Biden. Trump will be bogged down in a six-week trial, seated there in court while everyone else is running their mouths. Harris and Kamala and Biden, whose status authentic actively market, they're going to be using them to generate new clients. And they've already solicited donations based on this case. So in light of these considerations, the May 4th, 2023 ethics opinion, which the court declined to disclose to the defense, you got notice from ethics counsel on this, and you also relied on a factually inaccurate premise. The opinion stated that Ms. Mercon has no interest that could be affected by this proceeding. The opinion stated, we see nothing in this inquiry to suggest the outcome of the case could have any effect on the judge's relatives or daughter. However, it's now clear Authentic has made money by assisting clients who have literally solicited donations referencing this case. So again, if daddy dismisses the case, then the daughter can't write her emails about it anymore, right? Adam Schiff won't have any posts about it anymore. And Authentic, her reputation might be, you know, in the can. Your dad dismissed the case? What? Against Trump? He precluded Michael Cohen's testimony? He precluded Stormy Daniels' testimony because Michael Cohen's a perjurer? Whatever. The court's future ruling stands to further benefit those who are harming Trump and Lauren make some money in the process. Now,
Now we have some new updates about the X account. There are serious questions and appearances of impropriety must be addressed. Archived internet data suggests that Lauren M426 X account posted messages reflecting hostility against Trump. Now the defense is currently unable to access the full historical contents of the account, someone call Elon, but archived data includes telling examples, thus even accepting that Ms. Mercon deleted the account in April. One fair inference from that claim is she tried to destroy the public evidence of animus towards Trump around the time that you wrote judge to get a formal ethics opinion. So they just deleted it. That timing and the appearance of impropriety that it creates cannot be ignored. Now the account in question also previously included a repost of Authentic's January 2020 announcement that Mercon had just been promoted to partner and part owner. That post is no longer public. Around the time of the court's March 27, 2024 public statement about control of the account, the photo associated was a picture of Trump behind bars. They changed it to a picture as a child of Kamala Harris as a child, which raises further questions about who's associated in controlling the account. The photograph of Harris was then removed when public scrutiny even increased further. And then the court issued a public statement about the account. The public facing version of the account now states that they joined in March, 2024. So maybe deleted and reset the account, rejoined, whatever. Now, in addition to the court's public statement about this, the AP published an article on March 17th saying you appeared in an interview on this. You said that the court wouldn't talk about the case, but then you went and did an interview. Your Honor reportedly stating that getting ready for this case is intense. The court is striving to make sure I've done everything to be prepared, to dispense justice. There's no agenda here. We want to follow the law. We want justice to be done. That's all we want. Now, based on these reported remarks, the court appears to have discussed its approach to the trial. You've tried to vouch for itself to the public, right? You're trying to say, we're doing a great job here. You disclaimed any bias or just following the law and you're describing your plans to dispense justice. You don't need to say that if you're actually going to do it. You need to go out there and tell everybody that you're going to do it when people start thinking that you don't have the capability to do that. So this raises questions under New York law. A judge shall not make any public comment about a pending or impending proceeding. Now there's an exception to this as the people suggested, but there's not one for acknowledging intense preparation. You don't get to talk about that. Now the court has also denied Trump's motions for sanctions based on evidentiary submissions that are still not public because everything is being buried. Now, despite Trump's constitutional right to a public trial and has submitted as permitted ex parte submissions by Bragg. So Bragg gets to send stuff directly to the judge that Trump can't see. Normally you copy the other side on all your communications, permitting Bragg to operate in a modern star chamber in order to suit their politically motivated objectives is even more problematic when compared to the gag orders. You also expanded your gag order, which is an unlawful prior restraint, stopping Trump from talking about your daughter. Now, under these circumstances, Trump is seeking to defend himself. Now, the people are wrong that the court's statements are about a broad commitment to impartiality. No, the court's statements are relevant not only to appearances of impropriety, but also to Trump's now pending adjournment motion, as the statements arguably included efforts by the court to position itself favorably with jurors and augmented any concerns that potential jurors might have about jury in this case, whether it will be intense. So for all these reasons, due process requires your recusal. Now, your daughter's activities are unacceptable. She's a president and part owner. They're ranked number 21 in the country. They consult with Democrats, all Democrats, and they're rivals of Trump. They've made millions of dollars. They're going to make more money as these cases go on. And it violates Trump's rights. The website for Authentic confirms worked for Harris, Kamala, Shifty, Hakeem, Senate, House. Murkan has worked with literally Joe Biden since at least 2020. The judge's daughter worked with, or you could say for, Joe Biden. Could you imagine if this was reversed? What if the judge's daughter worked for Trump and Ms. Murkan worked for VP Harris? That goes back to 2019. That work has continued during the pendency of this case, literally still working for them. For example, between July 2023 and November 2023, Authentic has gotten 200 grand from Governor Gretchen Whitmer. And the focus of that is the fight like hell pack, which is to focus on supporting Biden during the re-election. So they're still taking anti-Trump pro-Biden money. In addition, the client list includes Priorities USA. The same client in April, the same month that Trump was arraigned, Priorities USA says that they're going to spend $75 million in six battleground states. And their plan is to remind voters of Biden's impact and reach them when they're online. Now, friends of Kathy Hochul also pay the judge's daughter a bunch of money. They got twenty-seven grand from DAGA PAC, which is associated with the Democrat Attorneys General Association. Oh, Tish James, stinky Bigfoot in New York who takes your shoes off in the courtroom, maybe causing earthquakes. New York Attorney General, also in the midst, who has brought a separate and also unlawfully motivated case against Trump. Hochul attacked Trump, calling him a disgrace.
disgrace. Angeron was also involved in the Tish case as well. Hochul has made many claims and Tish has been using X to taunt Trump. And this is what Authentic does. Wow. So are they saying that she's also working for X? Around the same time, James used the official X account of the New York Attorney General with her little posts. Maybe Authentic is posting those. As accepted as this rhetoric has become in the political sphere, it's no place being driven in a criminal case. Obviously, a political and commercial target Trump is of Mercon and Authentic. As another example, they've also worked for Schiff. Schiff literally led the unconstitutional and failed impeachment of Trump in 2019. They work for Goldman. Schiff rarely lets a week pass where he doesn't mention Trump and his prosecutions. He's one of at least six authentic clients who've used this case to make money. Jeffries and others have done the same thing. Here is Schiff's account. Breaking news! Trump has been indicted! My whole reason for existence is better now, says Schiff. Beginning in April, the day before the arraignment, Schiff disseminated a barrage of solicitations on Facebook. After the court denied Trump's recusal motion, he made another TikTok video. This is what they do. They're working for Biden and for Harris. They tout their use of Facebook to create these ad campaigns. And here's how much money they've made. Schiff, nine million bucks, man. Going to the judge's daughter, total of $30 million. 15 million in the 2024 cycle. FEC says that between the filing of the indictment on March and the present, 18 million bucks. So clearly unfair. Here, Authentic has clients who are opponents of Trump. They got paid money. She is literally an immediate relative of you, your honor. And the court used the court's facilities to protect your daughter. This shows us you have a bias. This is one of the situations where the courts shall disqualify itself. The commercial and the reputational benefits to Lauren from this court's ruling are manifest. Those benefits, the very least in a tangible reputational sense as well. Like if the judge dismisses the case, Trump wins. That's bad for Lauren's business. She needs to be someone who delivers victories. So she needs Trump to lose. One, to raise money, but also to win. If Trump, you know, beats this case, beats the rest of the cases and is reelected, that's not good for her business. Even if the court concludes that recusal is not required by the state constitutions as it should, recusal is appropriate. While it may not be required based on political affiliations and opinions, she has informed the public the court shares her bias against Trump. And so recusal is necessary. Her strategy here has been lucrative. It's based on communications that are specific to this case. Your honor is wielding enormous power that are going to incapacitate literally the chief political rival of her clients. The judge has the ability to take out the people who are paying her literal millions. Now, while promoting her own work, Lauren has disclosed statements by the court that reflect bias on her podcast. She said how the judge hated Trump's tweets and they're actively promoting Joe Biden and others. There's Joe eating ice cream. Authentic has called attention to the fact that the company has been part of Joe Biden's journey to the White House, right? You need that victory. We helped him get there. We'll help you get there. Hire us. Now they're finding similar type of clients by December following repeatedly sending case specific emails and advertisements. They're ginning up information. Here you go. They're creating ads that are biased against Trump. Within the last two months, Authentic has marketed itself through posts that were critical of Trump. In February, they posted these things to Instagram. Two posts. In early March, Authentic CEO and their company mischaracterized Trump as somebody who doesn't care about our democracy. At the same time, they're doing work for Adam Schiff. Here's another one. We're meeting with voters. Here's Schiff. And they probably created that. Like, Adam's not smart enough to figure that out, so they have to hire experts. Now, the manner in which they're marketing the company has been made worse regarding their public statements about a conversation with the court. And so this is very improper. They say for the following foregoing reasons, President Trump respectfully submits that the court must recuse itself as a matter of law under Judiciary Law Section S-14. And that recusal is also appropriate in light of the appearances of impropriety. So actual impropriety and appearances of impropriety signed and submitted by Todd Blanche and Emil Bove. And these filings are available on BlancheLaw.com. And so make sure you grab them and spread them around like wildfire so that everybody can see what the heck is going on out there. And so interesting recusal motion, something that seems pretty solid. And this is an affirmation from Todd Blanche explaining how a lot of this evidence was accumulated. And so that is available on our mind map and will be up at robertgovea.com. Now, here is what CNN had to face some hard realities from a retired judge who shared this when she was on with Caitlin Collins. This judge's name is Shira Shendelin, retired judge from the Southern District of New York, which is the federal district in New York. We're not in federal court right now. We're in Manhattan court in Supreme Court in New York County. And this is what the judge said in response to this recusal filing. I had the chance to read the motion and they've put together a compound 
composite of issues that would cause me a little bit of pause. Oh. And I can explain all the various things that they've put together. The main focus of this motion, as opposed to the previous one a year ago, which the judge denied, is on the daughter's line of work. As you already said, the daughter does work with many, many high-profile Democratic candidates. She works on their social media. They put out a post. They get contributions. She, as an owner, gets a percentage of those contributions. So there is a statute in New York which says a judge must disqualify himself if a person known by the judge to be within the sixth degree of relationship, and a daughter is the first degree, has an interest that could be substantially affected by the outcome of the proceeding. So the question here is, is this daughter likely to profit, to benefit from the outcome of this proceeding? And you have to understand, it's not actual conduct that's worrisome. It's the appearance, the appearance to a reasonable person that this judge cannot be fair and impartial given that relationship. So ordinarily, I would think that a benefit financially would be to a spouse because they share the income. This is an independent adult daughter. They don't share income. According to this statute, Ah. the judge must recuse if she would substantially benefit from the outcome. So that's one thing that concerned me. They don't have to share the money, but the fact that, like, think about that, right? If you're a father and your daughter is doing very well, you want to support that. You want her to continue to do well. If you exonerate Donald Trump and he rides back into the White House, you don't have a benefit. So the judge shouldn't have to get you know, actual dollars in the form of a check being deposited into his account. But the fact that his daughter is very happy about this, isn't that a benefit to a father? The facts that are of concern, at least to me, was the judge's original contribution to President Biden four years ago, which he made himself. Very small contribution. Yeah, I think it was $10, right? $35, $35 I'm told. $35. The small contribution, but he made it through Act Blue himself on the internet. He did give an interview where he said he wouldn't comment on the case, but then he said he's been intensely preparing and he wants to be fair and impartial and justice is important. He and his daughter discussed the former president's use of social media, which the judge condemned in that Get discussion. Get it, judge. She's and, going down the bullet point. The bah, daughter bah, reported bah, bah, on bah, it. Bah, let's go. The Office of Court Administration said the daughter's Twitter account ended a year ago, so any recent posts on that were not from the daughter, yeah. and I kind of wondered well, why I... the Office of Court Administration was defending the daughter. If you put all these together, is my point. It's certainly enough that maybe a reasonable person could have a doubt about impartiality, so I think it's kind of a serious motion. I realize it's 10 days before the trial, and I don't expect it to be granted. Yes, I think she's exactly right. Uh, so Congressman- that was some great analysis from that judge. We are going to be here continuing to cover this. Now, Trump has also filed an appeal on the gag, and so we'll be covering that one when we're back here tomorrow. And so hopefully you are subscribed and joining us because this trial is right around the corner. It's about to pop off on the 15th, and we're going to be covering it as best we can through X scripts and transcripts, and it's going to continue to get, I think, spicier as the days go by. So thank you for subscribing, my friends. Thank you for liking this video. Thanks for sharing our channel or a short video or a short segment with a friend or family member so that they can see what is going on behind the scenes on this case because this case is going to trial as far as we know unless a court of appeals in New York takes it away from them Mercon is not going to let up on the gas on this one so we'll be here thanks for checking out some of the links down in the description below we got watching the watchers.locals.com our members only community we'd love to have you join us we do streams in the morning great way to support the show connect with other amazing watchers out there and have some fun doing it we'll see you over there and back here on the next one Thank you.